Hello everyone, my name is Lakna. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. Today I want to talk about Venus going retrograde, which starts from the 23rd of July until the 3rd of September. And I did make a video about this already. It's on my YouTube channel. I'll see if I can link it below about this Venus in retrograde. But in this video, I want to talk more about the first part of this retrograde where Venus will be in Leo. Um, in the nakshatra called Marga. So this will be from the 23rd of July until the 6th of August. And we will, we, well, we are experiencing the energies of Venus in Marga since the 7th of July, but it will be a bit different now as Venus retrogrades. So it will be experiencing Marga going back, retrograding into the past, into our past, our past lifetimes, um, our childhood, um, yeah, just going back and also going within and internally so that we can like really heal ourselves by going within and um yeah i just want to talk about that first part of it so let's talk about maga this nakshatra is found at the first 13 degrees of leo and um maga means the mighty one or the powerful one and i feel i keep speaking about this in all of my recent videos but i do believe this is the time for us to really go within and see our light and really take our power back and step into our power um the leo card in tarot is the strength card and you can see there's a woman holding the lion's mouth open and feeding the lion and you know maga is found in leo the lion the lion is like the king of the jungle. He walks around knowing how powerful he is. He's so confident and he's not afraid of anything. The lion is not afraid and others are afraid of his power. So, you know, even in that strength card, you see that that woman, she is also in full residence with that powerful lion. She knows that she has nothing to be fearful of. She is so confident in herself and she's able to even give back to that lion. And this is the type of power that we need to own in ourselves because it is within us. It's just a matter of releasing the things that are holding us back from that. Um, so I want to share a recent synchronicity that's come up for me that I do believe is really aligned with this um, retrograde. Um, my beautiful friend Muna, if you're watching this, I love you. Um, she did an oracle card pull for me and the first card was um, called Poised. And I didn't think too much into Poised. Um, to be poised, I thought, yeah, to be poised means to be graceful, to be um, confident in yourself, um, yeah. But then the next day at my workplace, I work at a makeup store, um, I went to put a lipstick back um, and I just felt the need to check the name of this lipstick and this lipstick was called Poised. So after that, I really, like I looked into the word a bit more deeply to be poised means to be composed in yourself and really assured in yourself and to be fully in control of your capabilities and i believe this is what true confidence is and in the nakshatra maga you see the two different extremes where p potential extremes if you're not fully confident in yourself so one extreme is being like overly inflated in your ego by like really showing off by really trying to maintain some sort of image that is really not authentic to your soul and trying to yeah just really prove yourself to others in that way and um really being inauthentic the other extreme is not having a sense of your ego at all and because of that, not having boundaries, being walked all over and like really overly giving of yourself because you don't really have a sense of self. And um, both extremes have the same intention, which is to gain 
external validation and approval because you're not really accepting or approving of yourself. So this is what we need to be reflecting on in this time is are there any themes in our lives that can relate to that? And it's time to really, you know, reflect on our insecurities, our triggers, um, anything that is blocking our heart from really tapping into that self-love and um, yeah it's time to reflect on do we really love ourselves do we think we're worthy of love do we have self-worth do we respect ourselves um, are we confident in ourselves um, you know it's really important to reflect on those things and like personally I don't think I started really living for myself until just a few years ago I really think I was living for the sake of other people up until very recently because I believe yeah I didn't really have a strong sense of myself for a very long time and um you know I think this can resonate with a lot of people where um, we, you know, we want to do something, maybe something creative with our life and we feel like we, we're not allowed to um, or we're not really able to do what we want to do because um, of external fears or um, external control. Um, but, you know, after a certain age where we can see how the external has affected us, it's time for us to now take that control back to ourselves because we have the power to change those external beliefs that have, that aren't our own. Um, and, you know, I see this so much in like so many ethnic families, for example, like you grow up and you want to do all these creative things but you know like that's not going to pay the bills that's not going to support you you need to do something um you know you need to try and get into medicine or law or be an engineer like or an accountant like these are so typical in my country like you're not it's it's not so much the norm to do like things that are outside of the box or creative and there's so many of us that are born to be creatives um and you know now's the time to really tap into what you're doing with your life what are your priorities and are they aligned with what you want to do or have they been like manipulated or controlled or influenced by the external because now it's time to take that control back and really live your life for you that is aligned with your heart and your soul and not with your ego and not with other people's influence. Um, so it's time to really block that all out and go within and go, you know, internally reflecting on your heart and your soul's desires and let your heart be your compass in this time. Um, Ketu is the ruler of Maga and Ketu's um, ultimate goal is moksha which is spiritual liberation so through ketu we can really release all of these worldly egoic illusory ways of thinking and being um, we have so much potential in this time to release and let go of those things that are really gonna lead to our spiritual liberation and freedom um, which is the ultimate goal Ketu is also wanting us to um, take time out to be in isolation, to really retreat and reflect and meditate and um, do the spiritual work we need to to heal our heart. Um, in this time as well, Maga has very strong connection to our ancestors. So it's such a powerful time to connect with them, to do some sort of ritual to um, pray and really connect and um, you know just also try and reflect on what you can do to help your ancestors to heal the um, generational um, wounds and trauma that has come up because 
that is so powerful and that is what is really going to you know that is the most important work of all is just like really breaking those generational wounds and um that is what really does heal our heart um yeah so that's that's a big part of this first part of um this retrograde is um in sorry healing our heart through that way um so in my previous video i about venus in retrograde i spoke about healing the masculine and the feminine um because after this section in maga venus will be going into ashlesha which is in cancer so the sun and the moon um this is our masculine and feminine but in this first part while venus is in leo this is our masculine so it's the time for us to heal our divine masculine energy um which is also our connection to our father and all of the you know the paternal energy in our life um and the paternal lineage the paternal ancestry um that could be something you may be thinking about reflecting on in this time um yeah really connecting with that um really reparenting your inner child and being the father that your inner child needs um even if you grew up in a really loving um family or childhood it um there may there can always be things that that like even the best of parents have can easily have missed out on your inner child's needs um so going back and just being there for them and knowing that you know you're you have a really good connection with your inner child is so so important um there there was this time at a spiritual festival that i met this woman and something she told me stood by me for so long and it's just like always highlighted in my mind and she told me that when you heal your relationship with yourself you'll notice that your relationship with your parents also heal and it's so true and it's so triggering sometimes to hear that because especially if you've had like a difficult upbringing but i think after a certain age like you become you know in more in control and more aware of your emotional body and the way you know your thoughts and beliefs and you you just you know it's time for you at that after a certain age when you are more aware of the way that you think and feel and the way that maybe external external parenting styles have not served you well it's then time for you to take responsibility to heal those things and um it's you know just understanding that the way that you were parented like your soul decided for that to happen before you were even born you know the your parents and you made a contract before you were born that you were going to be treated in a certain way to help your soul evolve and grow so after a certain age it's your responsibility to take that power back and really heal yourself and when you do that you'll notice that the whole world around you changes and i can really vouch for that um i haven't had like the easiest relationship with my parents but i found like it's has nothing to do with them anymore it's like the more i heal the more um beautiful that relationship with them becomes so yeah it's really time for us to take full control and full responsibility into our life um and yeah really tap back into our power and our light and i hope um that we're all able to do this and heal so so much and release all of the blocks and yeah i'm excited for all of you i'm excited to hear what sort of like past connections are coming back into your life 
Um, I will recommend also in this time, just a reminder, it's not the best time to do anything new that is Venus related. So like beauty wise, like if you wanted to get like a new haircut or like um, something really crazy and drastic with your beauty or money or relationships, I wouldn't really recommend unless you do really properly reflect on it and you know that it's coming from your heart and soul's desire and not from like a sense of your ego or sense of something else that is not serving you because whatever happens in this Venus retrograde period you may have to redo later on if it is something that you have done before done before and you've done regularly for example like if you get your nails done all the time like every every week or so and you want to redo your nails like that's not a big deal at all but if it's something really new and drastic like you've never dyed your hair red and you want to do that maybe just wait until um venus goes direct um but yeah those are just a few little tips from me um i hope you have a beautiful retrograde season and you're able to really tap back into your heart and heal your heart and release all those blocks i love you all so much if you did resonate with with this video and um you do resonate with what i have to say i really do recommend you check out my venus in retrograde video um the first one that i've made i will try and link that below um other than that Stay tuned for um, the next planetary update. Bye.